Welcome to rebuilding a large old model twin cylinder steam engine. This is part number 9 and it's all about painting the engine, giving the engine the first coat of new paint. But before we can do that there's a little bit of filling to do. I'm using commercial car body filler for this, mainly because there's quite a deep indentation to fill. If there were only surface scratches I'd probably use cellulose stopper. But the other reason for not using cellulose stopper is that the engine is painted with oil based paint and the cellulose thinners in the cellulose stopper would probably remove the paint. As the paintwork on the mainframe of the engine is quite recent and ok really, well apart from the horrible colour and the fact that it needs a rub down, I felt that it was a waste of time removing it, instead I'm going to use it as a primer coat for the main new coat that's going on there. I didn't really need to show the mixing of the filler, if you've got half a brain cell you can figure that one out. What I thought I would do though is just talk over this bit, and tell you what I'm about to do. And what I'm about to do is fill the casting. Castings are generally quite rough, but this one was a bit rougher than most, it had a great big gouge out of one side, so on this main standard I'm filling it with some car body filler. It's a very messy job, and what I will do once I've filled the channel is wipe away the surplus then it's less to sand off. When mixing very small amounts of car body filler there is a tendency to add too much hardener, which of course I've done that and it's going off very quickly, so you've got to work quickly when you do this. Once the car body filler takes on a rubbery appearance, it's time to discard it, because it won't stick properly to the work, and may fall off. So very quickly with this last bit of filler, not wishing to waste any, I'm just filling a couple of marks on one of the upright standards. Once all the filling's done, give the filler time to harden, which is not very long with the amount of hardener I put in this mix then rub down the whole of the work with a piece of 400 wet or dry sandpaper. 400 is a good grade to use, it's not too coarse and it's not too fine. Use it wet though, if you use it dry it will clog up in no time. In the video I'm mainly showing the rubbing down of the filled parts, in real terms though I went over the entire engine with the sandpaper to provide a good key for the paint that's about to go on there. And when I'd finished sanding the parts, I used a damp cloth to remove any dust. It's very important to put the part to be painted above the baseboard. If the engine touches the baseboard, I'm likely to pick up a load of mess on the paintbrush from the baseboard itself. This painting part of the video, I'm playing back at a high speed, because in real time, it would be incredibly boring. It actually took 37 minutes to do it, and I don't want the video to run for that length of time. The paint that I'm using is Precision Paints Black Gloss. Now this Precision Paint stuff that I use, I buy from Blackgates Engineering, and I find it to be an excellent paint for brushing onto models. Because what normally happens, after you finish painting, you can see the brush strokes. But miraculously, before the paint dries, all the brush strokes will disappear. Indeed it is a high quality paint. I do tend to use a small paintbrush as you can see here, I do find that I have more control with a smaller paintbrush, and it's easy to get into the more intricate parts of the model. A paintbrush purchased from a DIY store that is ideal for painting a skirting board, is not always ideal for painting a steam engine. And I always do it this way, right or wrong, I'm no expert on painting, I just like to do it like this. And the other advantage of using a small brush is that I don't seem to get paint everywhere, well other than on myself, but I don't get it on any of the mechanical parts. Because sometimes when I paint steam engines, they are fully complete with all the components installed. The choice is yours though, if you're happier with a big paintbrush that's fine. What we need to avoid at all costs are drips and runs, they look really unsightly on a model. You could now be thinking, this man is an idiot. He's painting a steam engine with a very small paintbrush. And you may be asking yourself, why not spray the engine? My answer to that would be that spraying a model is fine, but on old steam engines like this one, it just does not seem to look right. So I generally paint them with a good quality paint, like Precision Paints Black in this case, and I get a finish that I'm happy with, and the engine still looks a little bit industrial revolution. 
A lot of the full-size steam engines that I've seen seem to be also brush-painted, and they look okay. Why not do it in miniature? So that's really the reason I use a paintbrush. I actually enjoy painting. I don't enjoy painting the house and DIY generally, but I do enjoy painting steam engines with a small brush. It's almost like a scale model brush. Well that's about it for now, I can't say a great deal more about this. Except that once this first coat is dry, I will turn the engine upside down and paint the underside surfaces because it's very difficult to see them in this position. And in this next painting session, I would then put the engine the right way up and give the whole thing another coat. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.